Hi there, it's Toy, and here are those reviews, I promise. <laughs> As I stated in my wrap-up video, I read 11 books in February. It's a lot of books, so let's just get to it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's switch my view. Oh, I've already got the first one pulled up. First book I completed in February was Smitten with Croissant, and this is the second book in a series. <clears throat> this was a fun and quick read for a lazy day or weekend. It's the second in a series, but can stand alone the way the author has written it. So I must admit, I thought I was rereading the first book at the beginning because it recounts the events that brought the, all the women together from a different point of view. It was pretty clever once I figured it out. In the first book, I really liked both the main characters and enjoyed their cute story. But this book was a bit different. I like Mia and Pierre as individuals, but it took a while for me to see them as a couple. I just kept expecting another man to appear that was really the one for Mia. I loved all the geeky references and salutes to the Star Wars franchise, as well as cute animal scenes, but there were times when Mia's negative opinion about anyone who wasn't poor seemed too harsh. Still, this is a romantic comedy, and nothing ever turned me away from the story. I laughed a lot with this one. Being a fan of this author's work, I kept wondering if there was some crossover between this series and her cozy mystery series, since Brood of Vegas treks their way into this story. You may have to read more of the author's work to get that reference. At the end of the day, my heart went out to Mia. I could see her tormenting herself with prejudices. I also felt bad for Pierre, who just happened to like a girl who refused to give him the benefit of the doubt. I won't say any more other than that the ending was extremely satisfying. I can't, rate, I can't wait to read the next one. Disclaimer, I received a free digital arc of this book with no obligation to review. Highly recommend it to fans of romantic comedies and star-crossed love stories. All right, let's see what I read next. Oh, and that was, that was a four-star review. Next, I read The Way of the House Husband. Uh, this one was very um, exciting for me because um, this was the first time I applied for an ARC directly from a publisher. I usually just go to the author, but this was through a publisher, and I was excited to get my first manga ARC. And so this review is very short. It's a five-star review. This was a fun read. The humor is so subtle at times, almost lock, locked in mystery, and yet there were times when I laughed out loud. Even though this is a humorous story, there were times I felt sad for the main character. He just wanted to live a peaceful life but kept having to deal with interruptions from his past. Still, I relished those few moments of action that seemed to come out of nowhere. It was a nice balance of concentrated focus and hilarity. I could totally read more of this. Disclaimer, I received a free digital arc of this book with no obligation to review. Highly recommend it to manga fans and anyone who likes a bit of humor and action together. And I guess I should also mention that it's kind of like a mobster story, but mobsters in, in the suburbs. <laughs> All right, let's see what I read next. Next, I read the Comic Squad Rescue, um, Recess. <laughs> So I think there's three different Comic Squad series, and this one is all about recess. So this one was a four-star review. This is a very cute and very funny little collection of recess comic stories. I love the orange, black, and white color scheme. It makes one think of Nickelodeon, messy situations, and childhood shenanigans. Each story is short and concise, really hitting home the imagination of the youth and honing in on just what on just what can be accomplished during a typical recess when given the freedom to explore. I'd say the only reason this book isn't a five star for me anyway is that it's very specific to what I imagine an American public school recess is like, and I'm not sure if it's like that around the world, as well as I'm not sure if this is um, universally appealing to all ages. 
Of course, I know this is meant for kids, but there are some stories that are meant for kids that are also appeal to all ages. Did I mention Nickelodeon or perhaps Disney? I really enjoyed this book, but don't know that if someone who doesn't have kids or doesn't work with kids would enjoy it as much. Highly recommended to open-minded comic book fans, elementary and some middle school aged kids, and adults prone to recess nostalgia. Yeah, I thought it was really cute. Ooh, pumpkin heads. So this one is a four star. And uh, this one is a graphic novel too, just like the last book. Um, the, I think the last, whatever. <laughs> All right. Um, as the four point oh rating suggests, I really enjoyed this book. I love the way it's drawn. Somewhere between cartoonish and mature, definitely stands out from superhero comics, but doesn't feel foreign to the genre. I like that the story is perfect for YA readers, but could overlap with adult reading fans as well. And I do struggle reading YA, so the fact that I, I like this was great for me. It's a sweet story, which may uh, give away my age here, that reminds me of Saved by the Bell, the summer episodes. Anyone who ever went to summer camp, summer school, or had some other seasonal job or camp experience can relate to this story, even though it is set in the fall and at Halloween. The seasonal and holiday elements were extra, fun bits to indulge those who enjoy the season. So this is where I'm going to have a spoiler. If you don't want to um, watch the spoiler, I'll leave a little message that you can click through and get past the spoiler. So. I may be the only person who feels this way, but the main reason I didn't give this story a five-star rating was the predictable ending. I thought it would have been so much cooler if it had been the story of long-lasting friendship, but it was just another cute guy doesn't realize his awesome best female friend is really the one for him story. Everything else about the ending was great, but I guess I just didn't see the point of Deja going out of her way to help Josiah get the girl only to want to be the girl gotten. Plus, she already had so many other people interested in her. End spoiler. I like how quirky and honest the characters are as well as the diversity depicted. Never been to Nebraska, but I hope it's like this book portrays it. Overall, the thing that I real that really sold me on this story is just how funny it is. It's not LOL funny, but a more realistic funny, a more realistic type of funny. You know, when something is funny because it's true, even though it's fiction. <laughs> Highly recommended to graphic novel fans, romantic comedy fans, and YA fans. Yeah, and this book was really is really popular, so a lot of people really really like it. I really liked it too, um, just for that one little thing that kept it from being a five star for me. All right, so this book I had for a very long time, and I keep kicking myself to take me so long to read it. This is Brown Sugar Fairies, and it's a four-star review. I really enjoyed this book and loved the illustrations. I could have totally used more of these wonderful images. The cover itself is one of the main reasons I adore this book. The reason I'm so impressed with this book is the teaser at the end that reveals the story of the cotton fairies. I need to get my hands on that book. Overall, this is cute and yet powerful story about brown-skinned fairies working to reverse damage caused to the earth by humans. The correlation between the how and why fairies aren't seen by people anymore and the basis of magic used by the fairies isn't completely clear, especially at the end when the power appears to be used twice when it isn't supposed to be possible but then it is a children's book and I may be overthinking things. <laughs> While I did like all the characters in this story, I didn't fall in love with them the way I had expected I would. That is not until the end. The end is what for me really pulls this story together all together. Instead of the story introducing readers to a magical world of brown fairies, which it does, I felt like it was more of an origin story for Peppa and what she becomes at the end, which is in no way a bad thing. It does, however, provide a very different reading experience from discovering a new world and characters to discovering a specific character's journey. Lastly, the author's voice, 
her style of telling the story is not exactly traditional, but I can't really explain why. It took a few pages for me to settle into the rhythm of her words, but once I did, I embraced the story being told. I'm so glad I read this book and can't wait, wait to read more from the world of Lamella. I believe the next book is to be a YA novel, so I hope I like it. Highly recommend it to fairy fans, fans of diverse or characters of African descent, an alternative and interesting magical cool system. Mmm, Forest of Ghosts. This is a four star. Now, this is a series um, I've been reading for a while. I really enjoy it. Um, this might be the first book in the series that I didn't give a five star, but don't let that fool you. Let's look at the review. I continue to enjoy this series and I'm pleased with this installment, but will explain up front that I didn't give this installment a five star rating for one basic reason. The two main characters just didn't spend enough time on the page together. It was essential to the story and critical to the overall arc as well as the overall development of the characters to separate the two main leads for a while. But after the way they came together in the last book, my mind couldn't process them not being together. It took me a while to really pay attention to what was happening in the story because I just kept waiting for the two characters to reunite earlier than they actually did. Ultimately, the satisfying ending made <laughs> made it all well and good. I even went back and reread some of the earlier parts with the assurance that the characters reunite and I realized I missed some pretty cool stuff. So I want to clarify here, the characters um, are not together like physically. That doesn't mean like they broke up or anything like that. It's just that a large portion of the story is only told from one of their point of view because the other one isn't there. Whereas traditionally when you read this series, it alternates between both of their point of view. And I just kind of missed that alternation happening because just one of the characters wasn't there for a while. Let's get back to my review. As always, this author um, didn't fall short of her research and painting a vivid image of the setting in which the story takes place. I always wanted to know more about Romanian culture since it is part of my husband's ancestry. I had no idea it was so beautiful. Overall, another great installment. Can't wait for the next one. Highly recommend it to fans of horror, complex paranormal situations, diverse characters, and smart dark fiction. Yeah, it's a really good book. Oh, so yeah, this is my five star. Another series I've been reading for a long time. So let's just go ahead and get into this. I had been holding my breath, figuratively, of course, just waiting to dive into this book, and the author did not let me down. Beth and Donovan are great, and I will always love them, but Thorne and Amanda melt my heart in this book. And just to quickly clarify, this is, a, like I said, an ongoing series. This is a standalone installment in the overall series. Beth and, Donovan, Beth and Donovan are the main characters of the overall series, and Amanda and Thorne are two supporting characters that get the spotlight in this one. So now, back to the review. Um, if you pay attention to descriptions and trigger warnings, you know going in that this book, like many in the series, deals with some tough to swallow concepts. Um, there were times when I had to put the book, put the book down and take a breather, but I always returned. I had to. I couldn't not. I know that's a double negative, but I'm expressing my feels right now. I couldn't not find out what was happening to who and how. The tornado is so scary and accurate, I actually had flashbacks to the few times I've encountered them. I had to put the book down in those times too, but that's just a sign of good writing on the author's part. She has taken me through so many natural disasters, some I've experienced in real life, such as the hurricane in the first book, lightning storms, blizzards, and now this tornado. I hope I never experience the other ones in real life. Still, there's one more disaster to experience, and I'm looking forward to it, in the book, that is. Um, great standalone installment with, to a wonderful series. Highly recommended to series fans, and adult readers of crime thrillers and romantic suspense. 
almost getting to the end. <laughs> Next is uh, From Fatal to Fierce. And it's a three-star rating, but the actual rating is 3.5. And let me just get into it. This is a really tough book for me to describe and explain and rate and review. It's a good book, no doubt, but there were layers to the experience I had reading it. Layer one. This book is written by someone from the same hometown as me. I've crossed paths with this person before, so I don't have a relationship or, or close connection to this person. It's kind of like the girl who had English with Britney Spears reviewing one of her songs. It was interesting to read about people in places I was personally familiar with, even if I wasn't close or intimate with those people or places. It's kind of unnerving to be somewhat close physically to someone and years later realize just how much you never knew about them. It's jarring to consider just how close you are to someone else's tragedy and then think about how things might have been different, or perhaps the same, if only you'd asked about it back then. Layer two. This book is very inspirational because it is a redemption story. Some aspects of the author's life I just couldn't relate to on a personal level, but everyone has something they have to deal with and or address within themselves at some point to get through tough times and or situations. It was that concept that I most related to. People's hardships may not be exactly the same, but all people experience hardships at some point. Layer three. I don't read a lot of books like this. I want to read more memoirs and stories of redemption, but I often find that the stories are too intense for me. Guess I'm a weakling. I never know what to expect when I read something sorry, outside of my normal, so I was taken aback by some of the language and details in which parts of the author's life were told. The book, for me, seemed to shift from a nonfiction account of facts to a gritty and raw narrative unexpectedly. Again, this may be perfectly normal, but for me, it was jarring. Still, it didn't cause me to put the book down. It just kind of put me on the edge for a few pages. Layer four, I write, so I make a habit of reading acknowledgments and content at the end of a story, whether fiction or nonfiction. I don't know if the average reader does this or not, but for me, the stuff at the end of the book was the best part. To be clear, this book is good without the stuff at the end, but I had several questions that I was afraid would go unanswered until reading the rest of the book. The stuff at the end is what really helped me process the story I'd read and put all the pieces of struggle into context with the message of triumph at the end. Overall, I'm glad I read this book. Perhaps I should read more books like this so I'm not so sensitive to the content and style of presentation. The author's story is truly an inspiration, even more so to me, knowing that we came from the same place. Recommended to adult readers and fans of memoirs, redemption tales, and African American interests. Next, we have Raven. This was a graphic novel. Um, it's a five star rating, but it's actually a 4.5. Uh, let's see here. I really enjoyed this retelling of the Raven story from the Teen Titans. I really liked the art style and the color scheme used. The mostly black and white and purple scheme really helped set the tone while splashes of other colors here and there help to emphasize important or critical elements as needed. This is very much a Gen Z take on a character that I believe became really popular in the early 2000s with the release of the Teen Titans animated series. The Raven depicted then was very much a new millennial take on the character and that has clearly influenced each rendition of her since. This book is also very much YA. It's also a very much YA presentation of this character's story. Since Teen Titans are a group of teenage superheroes, it makes sense their story be told from a teen perspective as opposed to an adult perspective trying to relate to teens. 
with that said, I admit YA is not the strongest genre for me to enjoy, yet I did enjoy this. I think this version of Raven's origin speaks to me for many reasons that may turn other readers away. I liked the diversity of the supporting characters, totally loved Max, and enjoy the slow build into the world of the supernatural. It would be easy to write a story about Raven and immediately jump into powers and abilities, but I like that this lets the reader discover them with her. The high school banter was a bit annoying at times, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be. <laughs> I did like that some of the high school cliches felt kind of original. I mean, every teen story has a mean girl, but at least this at least this wasn't portrayed as the perfect girl everyone loves and wants to be or be with. Then there are the standard prom shenanigans and teen portrayal subplots. Still, not bad in the overall scheme of things. What can I say? If you don't think too hard about things and try something a little new and different with an open mind, you may just enjoy it. Highly recommend it to fans of YA Supernatural stories and DC Comics. All right, let's see what's next. Finding Baba Yaga, a short novel in verse. So, this is actually a 3.75, even though it looks like a three star. I, I do think it's interesting that it's called a short novel in verse when it could have just been a short story in verse, but okay. <laughs> I really enjoyed this, but wish um, there was more of it. It was difficult for me to fall in love with it as it was my first time reading a book in verse, but perhaps on a second reading, my rating will change. Overall, I found the story clever and inspiring. I do wish there had been more Baba Yaga in it, but the main character is a good one. I like that she takes us on this journey of self-discovery that just happens to include an extended encounter with Baba Yaga. There's a big how your mother slash father raised you theme to, um, to explore in this book. The educational materials at the end were really great, but without those, the overall story wasn't as impressive. To be clear, this story is good and worth reading, but a lot of the death comes from reading the end material. Without the end material, the story is fun, if not a bit dark, if not a bit dark poem. With the end material, the story is epic, a novel in verse. Recommended to fans of poetry, strong female characters, European myths and legends, and novels in verse. All right, and now we've made it to the end. Let's see what is the last thing I read in February. The Vision, the complete series. Um, it's showing up as a four star, but it's actually a 4.5. Um, I had this book for a while and put it off for one silly reason after another but decided to binge it and then binge WandaVision. What a wonderful plan. So glad I did it. The main reason this isn't a five-star read for me because it's totally a great story is that it was really hard to read. Not that the words were hard to read, but that the content was difficult to process. This is a very sad story. There were moments of action, triumph, happiness, and hope but most of it was shadowed by a looming tragedy just waiting to happen. So many times I thought to myself, poor Vision. And yes, I'm aware this is fiction and he's not real, but if you read this and feel nothing, I'm not the one with the issues. Nuff said, great book. Need to go back and read more from this period. Highly recommended to Marvel comic fans and people wanting to compare the books to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that is everything that I read in February. Sorry for the long video, but you know how it is when you set up these challenges for yourself and they stack up. Yeah. So what did you think about what I read? What did you read? Um, Want to make a recommendation? I'm open to it. And I think, yeah, 